Macca's guides. <laughs> hey guys, Macca here, and welcome to my in-depth walkthrough of Inferno 5. Now, I did something similar to this with uh, Trials Fusion, and that game had a track called Inferno 4, which was the hardest track in the game. This is the hardest extreme track in Trials Rising. And I was a little bit kind of surface level with my descriptions of all of the checkpoints when I originally made that video for how to get a gold medal on Inferno 4. So I figured, based on the feedback, we're going to go a little bit more in depth with this one. Right now you're watching my replay of Inferno 5, and I can somewhat consistently get to the last checkpoint with about 10 or so faults. I'll show you how I do, how I tackle every single checkpoint, what I would recommend, and uh, some best practices, tips, and tricks in order to help you guys get through the track. Now, there are a lot of different techniques you'll need to learn, and for those, I would mostly recommend the University of Trials tutorials that are in the game. Uh, they'll teach you a lot of things, so if I do, if you feel like I'm skimming over something like, you know, I say something like, land with an up on an uphill incline, and you don't know what that really means, you can try to either use the on-screen commands in the bottom left corner, or you'll be able to kind of go through some of those tutorials and learn the basics about a certain trick. And then from there, we will go on and I'll kind of talk about every single checkpoint individually. A lot of the checkpoints have more than one method in order to tackle them. So I'll make sure to also kind of talk about alternate strategies for, for those who might not like a particular strategy and so on and so forth. So I, I figure let's just exit the replay and kind of get straight into the actual course. All right, so the first thing is, which bike do we use? And I struggled through this using the Mantis. It took me a while, but eventually I got the gold medal. And then I tried it with the Helium and realized that although the Helium is a little bit more difficult for most of the track, it makes the hardest obstacle 10 times easier. So I will be showing this tutorial on the Helium, as I think most people's bottlenecks will be at the last checkpoint and the helium makes the last checkpoint you can do it almost every single time using the helium whereas on the mantis uh the last checkpoint is a little bit kind of luck based to say the least nonetheless when we are in this is kind of checkpoint zero what we'll call it might seem really really hard and it's actually uh it's not something we're really taught much but what we need to do is we need to do a left to get uh seated and then a right to get ourselves uh, over this first little lip so that we land on the second ramp short. And then we're going to do another left right to get grip on the second ramp and shoot ourselves up and forward. So basically the pattern is left, right, left, right. And that should allow us to kind of land short on the ramp and get enough distance to go past everything. It still can take a little bit of um, trial and error and I would say... This is actually, it, out of all the checkpoints, this one is the biggest difference from the Mantis to the Helium in the bad way. AKA, this checkpoint's actually a lot harder on the Helium than on the Mantis. But luckily, because it is the first checkpoint, even if you take forever doing it, uh, it doesn't really matter because it won't affect your, your best time. Additionally, once you do make it up to the kind of first ramp up here, you can actually just stop on it. And uh, I'm actually really struggling here. Now, once you do make it on here, I would say you want to transition all the way across. However, with the helium, it is okay if you stop. I wouldn't recommend it. And then you just want to lean forward as you're coming off that ramp, making sure you have traction to get to checkpoint one. Now, on checkpoint one on the Mantis, I would recommend that you try to stop on each one of these pipes like this. And then lean back uh, in a seated position and then do a small bunny hop from pipe to pipe like so. And then you can kind of continue forward. However, with the helium, I think it is more consistent to do three back wheel taps. Although, I would imagine now that I'm trying to show it, it's not as consistent. But nonetheless, in terms of not faulting on this one, I would definitely recommend uh, stopping on the pipes. And then the strategy once on the pipe is in a seated position... Get 60% of your bike to the left, 40% of your bike to the right of the center. And then when you're a little bit, so I'm a little bit to the left of the center line, you do a, you uh, slowly accelerate and then you do a bunny hop. And it would look like that. This is a really important tactic to practice for this track because we're going to use it like three or four more times. 
All right, now that we're at checkpoint two, in the Mantis, what I would normally do and recommend would be to do this and then front flip back to the checkpoint and then go down and you have all day and night to get traction. And then we're, we'll continue, we'll do the next kind of part in a second here. But with the Helium, I think it's better just to throw yourself into it and then just try to get traction. Um, it's up to you, but I think the backflip might be more consistent for some people in terms of not faulting. Although it does take a little bit longer and it looks a little bit more difficult. But when you backflip and land on your front tire, just hold the brake to bring your, your uh, um, entire bike all the way back around. But once you do have grip on this beam, you'll notice that there is a kind of uh, vertical wall in front of us. What we want to do is we want to accelerate up the beam in such a way that our front tire clears the entire wall, but our back tire hits it. And the best way to do that is just to get to the bottom of the ramp, lean forward, and then fully accelerate up the ramp. I'm just trying to get it so you guys can really see what's going on. Um, so all the way at the bottom of the ramp, and then fully accelerate all the way up. Let your back wheel hit first, and that should bring you up and over. You might need to lean forward and brake to bring your entire bike over now one thing i didn't mention here is on this although i said to lean forward you do have to let go of your lean at some point in order to let that front wheel kind of get a little bit of air do not bunny hop on this because if you bunny hop you'll lose all your speed and momentum so we let go of a little bit of lean make sure that back wheel hits and then brake and lean forward over here um i actually didn't want to trigger the checkpoint but i think that was more or less enough for that for three, what I like to do is in a seated position from the checkpoint, I like to reverse and then fully gas it, landing on my back tire. Don't do a bunny hop or you'll end up way too far like that. If you do a, if you do a big bunny hop, you'll always end up too far. So what you want to do is you want to get like a decent amount of speed and then lean a little bit forward to get yourself a little bit of extra distance. And then you're going to want to land hard on your back tire at about like a 70 degree angle. And depending on how you hit it, you might need to do a small bunny hop like that to get yourself kind of up and over onto the pipe. And that's called a rear wheel bounce. There is a tutorial on how to do those more specifically. You will probably need to practice those quite a bit in general if you're looking to get better times and uh, more consistent extreme tracks. Um, but eventually you'll get over uh, onto checkpoint number four. Now for checkpoint number four to five, you can kind of throw yourself... I'm going to end up um, bailing out of this if it does end up working. But you can throw yourself into here and then do a little bit of a backflip like that. It actually did end up working first time. I found that personally to be a little bit more inconsistent. And obviously, inconsistencies are bad when going for gold medals. So what we're going to do instead is in a seated position, we're going to let our front tire go over. We're going to use our brake to kind of hook our back tire... And then once our back tire is hooked onto the platform, we're going to lean forward. And as we're leaning forward and almost upside down, we're going to let go of the brake but continue leaning forward in order to allow us to basically do a front flip. That sounds really complicated, but essentially um, it is not, even though I ended up failing it. It actually is a, a lot harder, in my opinion, to do this checkpoint on the Helium than the Mantis. The Mantis is a lot easier, but you want to hook and then let go and it'll bring you all the way back around with a little bit of practice that seems crazy hard but it's really not checkpoint five to six i like to land at a medium distance to land on this pipe and then transition into this nook some people want to do it all in one shot and it is possible but it does involve a back wheel tap which is a lot uh harder to kind of manage and maintain in my opinion as you can see that was a crash so what we want to do is get onto this pipe then get ourselves into this nook while on the nook you can actually completely rest in this crevice you want to lean forward and have both of your traction on your tires and what you'll see if you go up here is that there is a little bit of um you know an obstacle there preventing us from just kind of riding up and going forward so what we need to do for that obstacle is we need to accelerate up this ramp in such a way that our front wheel clears it but that our back wheel hits it quite aggressively actually so while leaning forward, you want to accelerate quite quickly. Let go of your lean in such a way that your front wheel barely clears this obstacle and goes over it, but your back wheel hits it quite hard. That'll start. That'll make it so that your front wheel lands on top of the obstacle, and then your back wheel and momentum will kind of carry into a front flip and bring you up and over. You can also do a flat method. So the flat method I'll show you once we're kind of up there. 
But if done correctly, hopefully it looks something like this. Almost. I'm not, you know, that, that's not the worst. It could be worse. Just a little bit more speed, more or less the same. And it'll look like that. Cool. So I'm not going to show that again because I think I explained it quite well. But at the very end, if you don't end up having enough momentum bringing you forward, you can do the flap. What the flap is, is when you're on your front wheel and only your front wheel, hold the accelerator or the throttle and tap on the brake. And it'll basically bring your front wheel up to you. So it's kind of hard to see, but I'm bringing all that momentum is caused by, well, obviously I'm leaning forward. But if I'm holding the gas and braking, the, the, the physics is going to bring my back tire back up to me. And that can help you get out of a sometimes sticky situation. For checkpoint six, what we want to do is we want to do a pretty big bunny hop here to get over everything. Want to drop down and just, just feather on the brakes as much as you can to try to slow down as much as possible. Uh, with the Mantis, you have to use your brakes. With the Helium, it has so much grip. That you can actually accelerate a lot more easily by trying to accelerate up the ramp. Um, although, that time it didn't work. So, I would probably recommend just trying to uh, feather your brakes as much as possible. And uh, land short to try to get, um, you know, as little speed as possible. But enough speed to clear the gap. If you are really crazy with this checkpoint, you can actually land so short that you can skip an entire section. But that's more of an advanced trick, so I'm not really going to show it. But hopefully it looks something like that, and then you just uh, go forward to checkpoint 7. Now, checkpoint 7, what you need to do is you need to do one bunny hop while you're aggressively hitting this ramp right here. And that'll bring you up and over. Your natural inclination might be to, like, try to do this and then, like, you know, like, wheelie up it or something. That's not going to work. What you need to do is, in a seated position, attack the the angle really hard while bunny hopping and it should bring you up and over like so and then you want to make sure your front wheel hits first you lean forward to get grip on both of your tires uh, you can watch the controls right here again we want to hit it and then we want to do uh, a lean back and a lean forward and although I didn't really get enough distance there that's more or less that was the right strategy <laughs> now that I'm trying to show it for a you know, third, fourth time, having some trouble. But once we're up here, perfect. Lean forward, both tires traction. You want a decent amount of speed for your back wheel to hit this white box and your front wheel to go over it. Lean forward to bring your momentum. And then you want to do switch from your front wheel to your back wheel and do a bunny hop. It sounds really complicated, but it's actually not as hard as it looks. And it should look something like that. I'm not going to show it twice. But it it's all happens really, really quickly. Now, checkpoint 8. I'm actually going to pause it just to make sure we don't run out of time. Checkpoint 8 is a, a checkpoint I spent personally over 100 faults on on my first attempt through Inferno. And it isn't really actually that hard, but it does only really have like one very specific method to get through it. And what we need to do for that method is on the porta potty in a seated position, make it so that your back tire is almost on the very left of where like the white roof meets the end so right around like here and what we need to do is we need to slowly accelerate from here while doing a massive bunny hop or else we won't get enough height and distance if done correctly it should look something like this hopefully again slowly accelerate and a big bunny hop there we go and again for this it's the same thing this is another seated rounded object so we're seated we're going to let about 60% of our bike to the left, 40% to the right. Unfortunately, the wheel in front of us is turning, which is going to make this a lot harder. But with most of our, with, with, a, with a small majority of our bike to the left of the center point, accelerate slowly and then do a big bunny hop. And with this obstacle, because the tire does rotate... It can be a little bit more difficult, and if you do screw it up, it kind of wants you to retry the entire checkpoint if you screw it up, unfortunately. So, that kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. But if done, you know, all quickly in rapid succession, you should be able to kind of grip your way through it with the helium like so. For checkpoint 9 to 10, 
Uh, this is a checkpoint way easier on the helium, so congratulations if you decided to use the helium. Do a back wheel bounce on this, land, and then just get your traction. On the Mantis, it has so many, like, so much suspension on it. It makes the game really difficult, actually. Um, but you just want to do a back wheel tap and then gain your grip, landing on an uphill incline. So back wheel first, uh, then, you know, smack with your front wheel, then lean forward and slowly throttle your way into uh, position. Here it's another one where you want to clear the obstacle with your front wheel but not your back wheel. This will send you flying forward with momentum. You might want to brake a little bit to bring yourself up and over. Surprisingly, that actually didn't work the first time. Um, all right, so now we're probably going to sit here and struggle for about five minutes if, if uh, you know, luck tells me anything. There we go. All right, so checkpoint number 10. There's kind of two ways to do this. There's the cheese way, which involves a fender grab. For those who are unfamiliar with the fender grab, basically, if there's a corner obstacle like this corner up here, and if you wedge that corner between your back tire and your seat, you can kind of grab onto it upside down. That can help you in an obstacle like this. It's very hard to do it on purpose sometimes. So let's see if we can fender grab on purpose here. Oh, we did. Wow. Okay, so that's a fender grab. If you end up kind of overshooting the obstacle, this is an easy way to get out of it. Uh, all I would have done was continue rotating my tire, and then right as I kind of cleared the edge, I would have used my brake to flip myself back forward. But if you want to do this obstacle legitimately, you want to basically get onto here, and then in, in transition, you don't want to stop on here. You want to get it so that, again, your front wheel clears the edge, but your back wheel doesn't. And then as you're halfway through that, you want to brake to bring your front wheel forward. So it's going to be a little bit hard not in transition, but hopefully it works. Almost pretty much like that. It's just if I had a little bit more speed, it would have brought me up and over a little bit more. So basically, that was it. And then you just go forward from that obstacle. You can clear it all the way to like the next obstacle in one shot, but I'm not going to show you how. Um, you can figure it out if you want to speed run. Number 11 to 12. You'll see this beam. It is a physics beam. As we hit it, it will start rotating. What you want to do is you want to hit the beam short. So you want to hit it like right there, you know, like right at where it starts. And you want to hit it with a medium amount of up and down. So if you hit it too lightly, it won't cause the physics of the beam like to move enough. And you'll probably go too low. Whereas if you go really hard on the beam, it can often be very hard to get. Like you'll end up just going up and not forward. So you want to hit the beam with like a medium amount of height. And, uh, and also land pretty short. And then you want to land on your back tire. And you want to gain all your traction, lean forward, and push to the next uh, checkpoint. This checkpoint, I would say, is actually significantly harder with the helium as well, but not too hard. All right. <laughs> Luckily for this one, as, as soon as you kind of land anywhere near that uh, ramp in front of us... Uh, you should have enough traction with the helium to bring yourself up and over. Like so. Watch your head a little bit. Even if you do get stuck on this checkpoint, I'm going to reverse a little bit here. Even if you do kind of get stuck on this edge with just your front tire up and over, you should be able to, with the helium and the mantis, you should be able to just power your way up and up and through it. Just be a little patient here. And you should be able to, you should be able to make it. Uh, I'm getting a little bit impatient here. Yeah. Uh, but it is very, 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 very possible. All right, checkpoint number 12. There's two ways to do this one. There's the consistent way I taught myself, which I'll kind of try to show you first. What you want to do is you want to land really short here. You want to get enough uh, speed and traction quickly to land on here. Now, once on here, we're going to do the seated rounded object bunny hop. So in a seated position, get about 60% of your bike to the left, 40% of your bike to the right, and then do a big bunny hop. Uh, with the Helium, I think this one might be a little bit more difficult to do this way, but with the Mantis, I found it to be way more consistent for me. So 60% to the left, 40% to the right, big bunny hop. And yeah, this one's actually a lot harder to do this method with the, with the, um, with the Helium. So the actual method that I know a lot of people like to use, we'll try it one more time while with not the transition, just to see if 
if it is, you know, easily possible with this. Okay, it is possible, but we'll do it in transition. Land low, gain traction, full gas up, back wheel tap, and then a bunny hop off that. Uh, with the Helium, it's a lot easier, in my opinion, to do in transition than with the Mantis. So again, land low, full throttle, back wheel tap, and a small bunny hop to bring you up and over. Uh, both of those times, I definitely could have actually made it. I just uh, ended up resetting. Um, and then you might have to, like, lean forward and do a little bit of, like, uh, edge manipulation on the, on the final part of that objective in order to uh, just make it through to 13. All right, let's see... That's not what I plan to do, but I know it is possible from here for sure to get um, to 13. All right, land low, lots of traction, lots of speed, and then a back wheel tap bunny hop. And even though I've done it two or three times already, we're now having some trouble with it. Unsurprisingly, the luck of recording videos like this live... All right, so if you're in this position, it's unlikely you'll be able to recover. Uh, even with the helium, there's just not enough space there. And then all we have left after this is checkpoint 13, which is either the easiest or the hardest checkpoint based on what bike you have. Now, if you have the helium, y all you do is you land here, you lean forward, and uh, you just gas up at about 20-30% and you'll make it to the top easily every time. Uh, no questions asked. Um, I just, I'm trying to make it so that I can time my voice with my uh, action here. Anyways, we'll land here, lean forward, and then we'll throttle up. And uh, pretty much just slowly increase or decrease your throttle and then you should be able to lean forward and you're, you're done. And this strategy is pretty much 100% consistent with the Helium every time you try it. Um, lean forward, about 20-30% throttle. You'll slowly climb your way up near the top. Lean forward and brake in order to bring your back tire up and over. And then just adjust. Now with the Mantis, you can't really do that. It is possible, but I would say it's very difficult. And I would say most people uh, are won't be able to do it. What the actual strategy for this is supposed to be, and in my opinion, this is a very luck-based obstacle, so even if you do get it down, I don't know how consistent you can get it. I do know for a fact that a lot of the people with zero faults on the leaderboards for this obstacle, they just got so good at the track that they kept doing it until they were able to get a zero fault run. Personally, I did my first gold medal run was 27 faults. I spent 21 or 22 of them right here. Um... What you're supposed to do is kind of bunny hop, land in like a little bit of a wheelie, and then power up. And you're supposed to uh, use a lot of your throttle at the bottom, and then ease off of your throttle near the top. With the Helium, this doesn't really matter because the, the bike has so much grip. And even if you do kind of get stuck, like I was about to get stuck there on the edge, you can always save, you can save yourself quite easily with the Helium, whereas you can't really with the Mantis. Um, you basically just want to land in a really strong wheelie. And then lean forward and throttle up, letting go of your throttle as you make your way to the top. With That was actually useful for the purposes of this video. I ended up bailing out on purpose, but with the Mantis, you will end up having to thro uh, fender grab the edge like I just showed pretty often just because of how easily the front wheel comes off of the edge. So the way vertical edges work in uh, trials is if you are accelerating up them, slowly you'll keep your grip but if i increase my acceleration my back wheel accelerates too fast for my front wheel to keep traction and my front wheel comes off of the ramp and then i essentially just start doing a backflip and with the mantis if you're doing a backflip a lot of the times you'll end up near the top of the ramp in almost a bit of a backflip position and the only way you'll be able to do the checkpoint is by grabbing it with the fender grab we were talking about uh now luckily with the helium just 20 to 30 percent of your throttle up and uh adjust as necessary and you should be able to quite easily make it up uh pretty much every time and i'm trying to see if i can get it down in the way i would do with the mantis but it's actually quite difficult with the helium uh, what i would do with the mantis is get a big bunny hop off the edge here land really hard in an aggressive wheelie and then push forward 
and just climb with full throttle. It would look something like this in a Mantis. Um, but with the Helium, you can do it in two stages easily. Just get onto here. Once onto here, you want to lean forward with grip. And you just want to um, accelerate at about 20-30% and adjust accordingly based on what you're seeing happening on screen. If your tire is lifting, you're accelerating too fast. If you're not going up, you're accelerating too slowly. And then once you reach the top, lean forward and brake to bring your back tire up and you are done. Inferno 5, use the helium. Don't, don't give yourself a headache. I practiced this track with the Mantis for four or five hours and got a gold medal. But eventually, once I used the Helium, I was able to beat my old record in about one attempt. And most of it is because of that last checkpoint. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. Special thanks to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. And hopefully, I see you guys next time. Peace!